Hello, my name is Ruby Zorn, and this is my Arkansas Governor's School audition tape. I'm typically willing to try new and different things, but I generally find myself working with colored pencils and or pen. I love using colored pencils and I feel as if I have the most control over them. I understand how to blend colors and shade, and I think that makes my pieces look more realistic. And then I prefer working with ink pens because I just love the satisfying, solid appearance it gives. And honestly, I'm a sucker for just black and white pieces of art. When I create my art, I honestly just rely on my own creativity and imagination. But if I'm ever stuck and I need help on what I want to draw, I normally rely on Pinterest and I find inspiration there. Uh, if that fails, then <laughs> I'll turn to my little brother and ask him for ideas or maybe even to model for me. I like to use him as my muse, if you will. And um, he typically actually has some pretty good ideas that they may be weird, but they work. <laughs> and so I like using him for ideas as well if I can't ever think of any. Within the last two years, the only education that I've received is a semester of art in 10th grade. However, I did not let this misfortune deter me away from drawing almost every day. To challenge myself, I have participated in several drawing challenges I find online. For example, these past few Octobers, I've participated in a challenge called Inktober, where you follow a prompt every day and you draw your interpretation of said prompt in ink. This past March, I followed a prompt called March of Robots, where each day I followed a prompt related to robots. I've also done several draw this in your own style challenges on Instagram just for fun um, and that's where you just draw another person's drawing in your own style. So basically in summary I have uh, participated in just challenges that consist of a certain theme and particular prompts to follow each day and then based off of my own interpretation I create an art piece. I would say that my most successful art piece is my rendition of Captain Underpants. My little brother asked me to draw this for him after he saw me drawing several draw this in your own styles and he was like, hey, can you draw me Captain Underpants? And me being the awesome, amazing big sister that I am, I said, yeah, sure, why not? So I did it. <laughs> when I finally finished it and showed it to him, he loved it and that in itself to me is a big success that I successfully drew Captain Underpants to my brother's liking. However, it went further than just um, being successful to my brother. So as I normally do, I uh, posted a picture of my drawing on Instagram and uh, proceeded to get likes like uh, normal. And I was dismissing all the notifications. Two accounts in particular stood out to me. The first one was no big deal. I didn't recognize it. So I just clicked on the name to see who it was just out of curiosity and the first thing that i see is todd grimes supervising producer at dreamworks on the epic tales of captain underpants and he left a comment behind saying excellent this was shocking to me because it was honoring to me that a producer of a tv show that hundreds of kids watch including my little brother and myself on occasion liked it that's just unbelievable to me. Now, the second account came a little bit afterwards and it was just as shocking, if not more. So the name was Petey Ha Ha and I immediately recognized that as Dave Pilkey. Dave Pilkey is the author of Captain Underpants. The author of Captain Underpants liked my picture of Captain Underpants and I couldn't believe it I couldn't wrap my head around the fact that the author and a producer two very successful individuals liked my picture it was amazing to me <laughs> so I'm one of those annoying people who don't like choosing favorites 
But I can confidently say that one of my most favorite pieces of art that I've done is a tarot card that I designed for my last project in art. I decided that I wanted to do my interpretation of the Major Arcana tarot cards. And out of the 22 cards that I designed, the one that I am most proud of is the Lovers. This was the result. I can't exactly describe why this card in particular just resonates with me, but every time I look back at it, my chest fills up with pride and admiration for it. It just makes me so happy. I don't know why, but I mean, I am a sucker for a lot of cute romantic, cutesy, tootsy, whatever things. And so that, I mean, that might play an important role in why I love it so much. Out of the following five pieces of art, this is the oldest piece that I have done. I am very proud of this piece because I think it is absolutely beautiful and it is one of the first times that I really started working with watercolors. I decided to use pictures of flowers from a magazine to create her crown because I like the appearance of mixed media and I wasn't confident enough in my skill to paint flowers. But overall, I love the simplicity of this piece and I have it as my profile picture on Instagram where I post all of my artwork. This was a piece I created in a time of stress. The day was going kind of rough and I had the sudden urge to just create something. For some reason, I had this image in particular pop in my head and I was determined to bring it to life. In order to create it, I got a cardboard box, turned it upside down, and paper mache some colorful patterned paper onto it. I then drew the hand on a separate piece of paper, outlined it with Sharpie, and then cut it out, doing the same thing for the plants as well. Once I had the pieces cut out, I placed them where I wanted them to go and glued them down. I then sketched out the words before going over them with pen and sharpie and then cut the A from a spare piece of cardboard. When I completed the piece, I was extremely pleased with its outcome and I currently have it hanging above my bed. This was a school printmaking project that I did in 10th grade. The assignment was to create a print with depth value and the image had to show background, foreground, and midground. My teacher gave everyone a piece of linoleum once we had sketched out a design and colored the parts that we were going to carve out with a colored marker. We then went over our design with a charcoal pencil and pressed it onto the piece of linoleum. Once the image had been transferred, we went over it with a sharpie and colored in the parts we wanted to cut out with a washable marker so that it was easy to identify. We then proceeded to carve the image out and once our teacher approved us to do so, we were allowed to ink our stamp and make our prints. I made several prints since printmaking is very difficult to ensure that your final piece looks good, but this piece in particular was one of my best outcomes. This was another school project that we did, and also the first time I really painted with acrylic paints. I had worked with acrylics before, but it wasn't to paint a picture like this. The assignment was the same as the mushrooms, except it was to be done with acrylic paints rather than on a print block. I was determined to do a piece with fat mermaids on it because fat mermaids are the absolute best, and I prefer to create fantasy pieces anyways. It was rather time consuming I quickly learned, but I also discovered how much I actually liked using acrylic paints. Despite how frustrating it could be at times, I found that the fast drying qualities that acrylic paints possesses are quite useful. I also liked how I was able to easily go over an already painted section and have the paint easily covered up. When I was painting, I had the reflection of the light from the sun and the water backwards, but my teacher helped me fix it. Also, the skin tone of the mermaids was a mixture of several different colors because my, colors, my teacher insisted that we use multiple primary colors rather than secondary colors. I'm extremely pleased with how this piece came out, especially considering it was one of my first times working in this media. Finally, this is a piece from the past Inktober I did, the prompt for this day in particular being pattern. I wanted to be different and not just design some random pattern. Instead, I thought about, well, what has patterns? Oh, tattoo sleeves are made up of a lot of patterns. So I decided to draw a woman with a tattoo sleeve. I wanted to keep the Halloween vibes throughout all of my Inktober drawings, hence the reason I gave her a knife and a malicious look. I also drew her in the nude because I'm all about showing off dead ass. Just kidding. I drew her in the nude because I'm comfortable drawing the female figure, especially when they're larger women. I myself can be considered a larger girl, but I just want to remind people that there is no size limit to beauty. Sometimes I'll have moments of doubt in my body confidence and I feel bad about myself. However, when I draw my large nude women, it's like a reminder to me that, hey, you're still beautiful. There are people of all different sizes, and this is your size. You're perfect the way you are. 
When I do this, I feel better about myself and hope that by portraying large women, I can help others feel the same way.